The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more into the breach do we go, dear friends. As always, we like to meet you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. It does. And what else do we have going on out here? Well, the market up a whopping, incredible two points today. Uh, I'm not going to say that that is either a win or a loss if you're a bull or a bear. Um, but uh, one of the things going on today, the last day of fun buying. So we're going to watch the close here very closely. But guess what? This is about as good as it gets. If you're talking about Fund inflows moving the market. Uh, that's about it. So far, what we do know is on Friday, the uh, a lot of those uh, K reports, 10K, 13K uh, document dumps all got uh, uh, put out. The FBI wasn't the only people out there dumping documents into the weekend uh, on emails. But uh, there were a lot of uh, that stuff. But what did we do find out from all those filings? Well, the big fun masters, rulers of the world, rulers of the universe, were all selling. Uh, they were a very, very heavy net seller over the last two to four weeks of August. Now, this could be one thing, which is they're cleaning up their uh, losers and getting ready to go and put that money back to work on winners, or that they just think that uh, their money is better sitting in an account at the moment. Um, certainly... Uh, the uh, volume as we look at it today is a little bit different than you would think. Um, you know, we've got uh, just 2 billion shares, so this is not any kind of rocket ride to the top on volume. We did have about, uh, I don't know, 600 million of them come in uh, early in the day when a lot of people were selling. But, of course, like I said, a lot of these... Uh, it's going to be what we see at the end of the day. I don't think uh, with fund buying uh, rolling into the end of the day, you might see some actual le very late to the party fund buying at the end of the day. And maybe even the first thing in the morning, they may try to squeeze it in. But we're within about, uh, what, two, three trading hours uh, in equities of having the most amount of cash that you're going to have coming in. And again, if you go back and look at those hedge fund numbers, uh, it is a uh, seller's paradise as uh, every time the market goes up, they give uh, the market just a little bit more. And uh, anyway, uh, volume is okay. It's not fantastic. Um, I've written a little app to go back and track the volume all day. And uh, we'll be talking more about what I'm going to do that with that in the future. But uh for the most part, what do we got going on right now? It's just, uh, it's, uh, it's just not a whole lot. Market's not going down. It's not going up. Um, every time it does go down, someone throws a little bit more cash at it, and as soon as it hits a level, uh, normally, eh, pretty much around twenty-one seventy-five, the volume all drops out. So everybody wants to buy a pullback. No one wants to buy a breakout. And we'll talk about that, many other things after we get this party started. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. And what do we have for history today? In 1915, a prototype tank named Little Willie rolls off the assembly line. In England, Little Willie was from uh, far from an overnight success. It weighed 14 tons, did an incredible two miles an hour over uh, rough terrain. Uh, not a lot of shock absorbers back in there. Uh, improvements were made to the original design, eventually transformed military battlefields, got everybody out of those trenches, 
and of course uh, led to uh, the end of that war in 1918. Uh, but uh, why the war had a lot of casualties, it was a drop in the bucket to what actually happened. Uh, that was uh, when the United States decided to go to war. Uh, they started getting uh, everybody and their dog involved in uh, leaving these little tiny hamlets that they lived in, tiny farms. Maybe these people knew 20, 30, 40, 50 people. Uh, they'd done that way for the last two or three or four generations. And guess what these people did not have? A an immune system. They didn't, they weren't in the big city. They didn't have a lot of ability to fight off infections. And in a little town outside of Leavenworth, Kansas, uh, there was a big training um, facility. And no one knows exactly where it started. Uh, but uh, it was uh, somewhere around uh, 1917, 1918, um, hundreds and then almost all of the uh, folks started getting what was later to be called the Spanish flu. Uh, and uh, why you might make a case that upwards of 20 million people died in the war, uh, there are cases where they say almost 50 or 60 million folks uh, died from the flu, but uh, they know it came from a bird. They know it'll probably happen again or something like it. But uh, you had a lot of people that had no immune system, and uh, they got it and died rather quickly. We took it uh, to England. It got to uh, Spain, where because of uh, the war going on, uh, every newspaper was being um, censored. No one wrote about it. No one knew that literally nothing was going on in London because everybody was dropping like flies. Uh, but in Spain, where there was no war, and uh, you found out that the, the flu was everywhere and why it ended up being called the Spanish flu. But uh, a lot of things came together on this day in 1915 to form the first tank, who uh, now continues to control battlefields, especially in sandy, dusty, arid climates like the Mideast. A little bit of freedom fries out there, the French uh, in the news, and that is uh, France's far-right National Front set the tone for the campaign uh, for French presidency. They're calling a, a in to the EU themselves, and uh, next spring they will have an elections. It looks very good for them, mostly because uh, the current crop of French leadership yeah continues to think that they're going to do exactly the same thing that they've done before. But if you were thinking that the EU would be able to at least hold together, uh, it may not be anything more than nine months to 10 months away. Uh, Intel bought a small company called uh, Movidius. It creates what are known as computer vision chips. These computer vision chips are not too far from what NVIDIA actually makes um, but uh, it is kind of interesting to see Intel trying to get into that part of the business of course they'll need these things for driverless cars they'll go in cell phones and other things we will be back TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey, takes your phone calls now, now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 anyway uh intel getting big into the vision chip thing and uh, what what these are are what are known as risk reduced in, uh, instruction set chips, but also kind of more what uh, NVIDIA and AMD is doing and why both of those companies have been uh, going to the moon. Uh, that is that uh, GPUs um, or video cards, as they're known also, um, have the ability to do what you need to see things and for computer learning. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the algorithms I was working on last week, I figured out that uh, a brand new video card that costs about 250 bucks uh, would uh, shorten on my machine uh, eight months in about one day. So uh, you know, these things can be, uh, they're not useful for everything, uh, but especially for mach machine learning algorithms, computer vision, uh, training of these systems, pretty big deal. Uh, Intel is focusing on the little ones and the cheap side of this uh, that would actually go into the cars or into phones, that kind of stuff. Uh, the Note 7 is being recalled from Samsung Galaxy. Uh, pretty neat phone, played with it a bit. Um, I don't use a phone that much, so it's not a big deal to me other than the technology behind it. I like the phone, uh, but uh, it looks like a bad production of uh, batteries uh, that they have from a subcontractor is going to cost them close to a billion dollars. All these phones need to be replaced, uh, and because they may have the batteries may have caused problems to the phone themselves. Anyway, about 36 of these have already burst into spontaneous uh, combustion. Uh, and one of the side notes would be out here that uh, when I tell people I dislike batteries, uh, this is the reason why. It, uh, it doesn't matter what you do, especially when you're making that many of them. Uh, it's just, I think it's just a matter of time before we start seeing more uh, of the same from Tesla's. Uh, the battery technology is pretty close. Um, but uh, 
you know, these things uh, get uh, high pressure, uh, can burst and rupture. Lithium is a fairly combustible metal. Uh, and uh, there's got to be some better technology than what we have now in batteries and probably a different technology to really move us forward uh, in the future. Apple is having an announcement tomorrow. It'll be at 1 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, what was that? At 10 o'clock on the left coast. And what do you have? Uh, very interesting that there's almost no movement on it. Uh, this does piggyback, though, uh, on what is happening in Samsung. Um, they were not going to, they had actually had the hall reserved for three weeks from now for, for Apple. So I suspect it is going to be a long time bef uh, between what they show the new iPhone and when it actually does ship. Um, last week, they moved the, the numbers down for how many they were going to sell, and the press didn't even cover it at all. Uh, on Friday, they said, well, it started to leak out that Apple ordered more parts. And, of course, uh, that's all the press wants to talk about today. didn't matter. Uh, but uh, if you look at the amount of units they said they were going to sell last week on Monday and today, it's the same. So maybe that's a better explanation on why Apple itself is uh, doing a whole lot of nothing today ahead of its uh, release. Now, uh, a lot of people are starting to get kind of a little angry uh, at Apple. Uh, pictures of the new iPhone have already leaked, as they almost always do, and you just get into production at all, and somebody on the assembly line takes a picture, sells it for uh, 200 bucks to a website here in the United States, and uh, that is all. Uh, they're going to replace the standard USB connector on the bottom with a USB-C, which is a new version of that, but it is also a jack for the headphones. And a lot of people are saying, hey, I like my old ho uh, headphone jack. What are you doing here? Give me that headphone jack. So a little bit of uh, resistance to new technology. Uh, I can think of some very interesting devices to use with that. Uh, but uh, the question is, how many people are going to want to go buy something that they can't plug their just uh, old usual headphones in. Um, since it will supply power at the same time, uh, you will be able to have devices, uh, low power devices with say like maybe a little amplified headphones, some other things, um, powered uh, credit card swipers. Uh, there's some pretty good stuff to it. I imagine it will work out for a while, but uh, it's probably gonna take uh, six months, I suspect, to uh, get everybody on board with this, maybe even a year. So a lot of people are going, well, I'm kind of looking at Apple with a jaundice view. Other than that, what does it really get them? Uh, a little bit more interesting camera, at least to the rumors. We'll know for sure tomorrow at 1. Uh, but Apple off 13 cents today. Uh, they were up uh, 108.30. Um, so what, up, a, uh, up, what, 70 cents? higher than now, but not a big deal going on here. My guess is that uh, the shipping date, if they mention it tomorrow, will probably mean that this thing ships a lot later than anybody will. Um, my title my uh, title is wrong here. It should read Puracell. Um, U.S. Food and Drug Administration issued a final ruling if you missed it over the long weekend, uh, that uh, you can't have any of these antibacterial soaps anymore. What are mothers going to do if they can't wrap their kids in bubble wrap and pure sell them to death? But uh, again, kind of going back to that uh, 1918 thing where a lot of people didn't have a lot of exposure, especially in early life, uh, to uh, the flu and other things and became incredibly susceptible to it let it mutate, grow, and uh, become a killer of some 50 to 60 million people. I think there's a little bit more of that in that happening now. Uh, after the bell tonight, we've got Casey's General Store and Dave and & Buster's. Uh, neither one are going to move the market. Uh, Casey's going to be interesting to me of the two 
Maybe it's going to give us a little idea on how these quick stops are doing. And uh, that takes us into the move. Where we're going to kind of continue moving uh, out here. Um, so anyway, what else is going on? Uh, well, we'll get into a great deal of those. I think we just have a minute or two before the break. But you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And of course, you can always post a message in the den. <laughs> uh, question in the den. Tell us about Facebook Oculus rollouts. Um, yeah, Purell. Purecell. <laughs> Purell is what I was thinking of. Everybody, Purell's. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Oculus Rift when we come back. Uh, why I don't think it's going to be a big thing right off the bat. We'll talk about that, and then we'll get into a bunch of charts of stocks that are moving today. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we had a question on Facebook, and what about the Oculus Rift? Um, you know, I know the margins on it are going to be kind of good, uh, but one of the things that I've been thinking about is, um, you know, what in Facebook, 
it, how much money do you need to actually move the the needle, uh, the gas gauge on this? And I don't think this is that part that's moving it today, although maybe somebody's talking about it. I haven't heard about some news. You're going to need a computer that's somewhere around fifteen to $2,000 uh, in expense to drive the Oculus Rift glasses, which will be about 600 bucks. So at a minimum figure, a Christmas present's going to cost two grand to 2,500 bucks, uh, plus any software. And the question is, I'm just wondering how many of these things are they actually going to sell? The demo is pretty good. I don't know if the demo's two grand to 2,500 good. Maybe that's it. I suspect that a lot of this will drop in price uh, significantly over the next couple of years. I think it's a product, but uh, I think you're really talking about very early adopters in this. And normally, there isn't a lot of money in very early adopters. Maybe uh, Facebook is going to get a little bit of love uh, for them being uh, the first end of this thing. Uh, but I think uh, before this thing becomes uh, ubiquitous, it's probably going to have to drop under about uh, eh, probably under $500 for the device. And I think it has to run on a computer that's probably $1,000 or less. This is not going to be running on the $350 computer you bought at Best Buy. Uh, hopefully that answers your question, Mr. Z, about the Oculus Rift rollout. You're going to need a lot of horsepower and a lot of hardware to make this thing run. And that's why I haven't really spent a lot of time talking about it. It's just the glasses, no big deal. 600 bucks, I think people would buy it. The ability to run it and the computer to, uh, and ability to run it, probably very narrow. Uh, software also available for it. Uh, fairly limited and expensive to begin with. Anyway, uh, we had uh, some other stocks of interest moving here. Let me uh, get to those if I can. And I got them. There we go. And, you know, uh, probably the most interesting buyout this morning was General Electric buying a... a uh, 3D printer company that has moved made most of the 3D companies that had high short interest. Uh, these things are perpetually high short uh, interest. Um, but uh, we've had a few of these uh, voxel jets up eight. We'll take a quick look at that. Um, you know, a nice little pop out here, but uh, are there opportunities? Does their does their future really change out here? I don't think this changes anything uh, unless you are getting bought out. But, uh, you know, if you're uh, trading 100,000 shares a day or something uh, and you're 40% short, uh, people might decide that uh, eh, maybe I'll just go ahead and take a few shares off the table. But uh, volume, not that big for as heavy as short interest in a lot of these stocks. X1 is another one of these also ran, uh, although it's done a little bit better. This one's very close to its high, uh, but uh, you wanted about 610,000 shares from April 14th. I got into it with 180,000 shares on the 26th of August. Uh, today, 174,000 so far. So, uh, yeah, what can you say about it? Uh, for the big guys, SSYS, out here up about 4%. Nice move in this, but still doesn't get it out of its trading range, which is the low 19s into the upper 23s, uh, $24. Um, actually making uh, kind of a little hammer out here today also. And, of course, uh, my original favorite uh, that we bought and actually shorted both, made money, big money both ways on the, this one, uh, popped up, but, again, volume not all that exciting. As I said, uh, and I guess the charts kind of back me up, not a lot of people doing anything other than covering maybe some of these shorts on these stocks right now. So uh, does it lead to anything bigger? I don't think so. Anyway, uh, 2183 on the S&P cash, 2.2 uh, billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape. As I said, the volume kind of really waning out here. Uh, I'm wondering if the big run from uh, 2175 wasn't the end of fund buying as we've known it. Uh, anyway, other stocks of interest moving out here. Uh, Baidu, 
behind you. Uh, one of its better moves as of late, but I don't think this gets it out of anything other than coming up here and tasting the uh, bittersweet day of May 2nd this year with this thing gap down and with a 10.2 million shares so far. We're into that with uh, uh, 5.9 million shares. Again, this is uh, I've been going through this in my newsletter a great deal uh, about how many of these stocks are coming back to these double uh, gap points. This uh, stock gapped up on April 29th, and then, of course, the next day pops right down the other way uh, on the uh, 2nd of May, and it leaves a gap from one day up to one day down. It's amazing how many of these stocks are coming right back to this. Even if you uh, look at the May 20, uh, May 31st uh, high back in here, this had 24 million shares um, when this thing sold off heavy on May 31st. So 5.9, uh, not a rousing endorsement of Baidu, although um, I think uh, Andrew left of Citron uh, was hammering uh, a buy on the stock last week. Uh, another one that perpetually has a lot of short interest in it. Uh, a deal with the devil, and that devil, of course, being Volkswagen, and yet another company left Cummings out in the drive. Cummings, uh, their big diesel engines and smaller diesel engines. I don't know exactly what happened in the deal other than Cummings is on the outs for it. Uh, down on monstrous volume today, down to 116.92. Uh, you've got a nice breakaway gap out here and three gaps lower. Uh, this could easily take you back down to the 105.33 level. And one of the reasons why, uh, as Tom says, you hate high volume lows. Uh, as my friend uh, Tim Ord says, high volume lows are not uh, lows until they've been retested. Well, the first one came in at May 19th with 0.9 million shares. You got back in it with 3.9 million shares. Um, you got about an 80% chance this thing's going to get retested within about six months. And my guess is this is going to make a beeline back down to this 105, 106 area from previous lows. Uh, to, to do, what do we have out here? A couple of emails. We're trying to get to those questions. Uh, anything else? Is uh, What is Booth, uh, Buffett doing with Duracell? Um, it's just a consumer item to him. Uh, they're not, uh, for the most part, lithium ion cells. Uh, but, uh, that's it. I, I don't think, uh, there's a whole lot. <laughs> uh, he speculates more. Okay. We'll get back after this break. Yeah. I don't think, uh, Buffett thinks that much other than people buy batteries and Duracells for the most part don't blow up and catch fire. Uh, those are, you know, your basic alkaline batteries. We're talking about high-density batteries is what I'm talking about. We'll be back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And we're back. Uh, one of the big buyouts today is in the uh, pipeline industry. Spectra Energy uh, listing is SE. Um, pretty much everything you need to know. Um, pipeline business still good, and uh, this is uh, let's go back a little farther here on this. Uh, you know, you've broken through. You know, when you get new, this is what you should see instead of the wimpy stuff we have seen. July twenty fourth, forty dollars ninety four cents, uh, two point eight million shares, and uh, you got six million shares. Now that's a breakout. Kind of reminds me of. Uh, of uh, Crocodile Dundee. This is a knife. That's not a knife. This is a knife. That's a breakout. Uh, that's a breakout with volume. And tells you that a lot of people think that uh, that is something that's uh, really happening. Uh, opposed to, uh, what is it, Monsanto, uh, M-O-N, uh, who gets a buyout offer of $127 and can't get up there still. In fact, it rolled over again yet here today. So uh, what does that tell you? So a lot of people are not believing that 127 at all out here uh, on Monsanto. Uh, other stocks moving of interest, ATVI. Uh, coming up very close. Volume looks uh, fairly decent so far today on Activision Blizzard. They're having some kind of deal in L.A. on games, but... Uh, Looks like this one is going to be able to go through with volume. The July 13th high, $43.05. Uh, we're through that with some decent volume. A hammer candle kind of on the op, on the better side of it. So this one looks kind of interesting up here at the highs. Um, you, of course, want to wait and pull see this thing pull back after a nice run to this $43 level to buy it. But uh, interesting. I uh, guess game business is still doing well. Uh, we'll go through as many of these as we can. General Cable Corporation, uh, one of these that uh, I had in the newsletter this morning, uh, approached its uh, April 29th, 2016 high of uh, $16.41 with 1.3 million shares. Uh, on Friday, it had 340,000 shares. Pulling back, not a lot of volume so far, though. Uh, Bloom and Brands uh, is uh, Bloomin' Ugly, um, if you're short. Had decent volume against the June 9th high, uh, but no real follow-through out here today. 
Citibank, uh, everybody is pushing, pushing, pushing on these financials, but uh, it looks to me like they're pushing on a string here at the highs. Two point, uh, what, a 3.2 million shares back on March 18th set up the high and the high volume spike, $36.24. Uh, we went that on the first uh, set of any kind of sideways day uh, on Friday today, down and picking up volume which is uh, one of the better stocks out here, giving us some signals. Clean Harbors, uh, this one's getting back to its support area. Uh, volume not picking up on that one today. Uh, Canadian Pacific uh, Railway, these railways have been acting rather weak as of late, at least back into these highs. Um, not a whole lot going on here. Very light volume again, though, April 22nd. 15138 2.3 million shares to Friday's 384,000 shares to Thursday's 635,000 shares. We go back, it's kind of like that. You know, the last big volume day you had was 1.9 million shares as you approach that high on the 20th of July. Um, and, you know, your biggest volume day was this huge volume down day of 5.4 million shares on the 4th. Well, we're creeping back up through this 151 area. We do have a gap uh, that goes back quite a ways. We'll see if we can't pick that up. Goes back when this thing fell apart back uh, to, 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 of uh, the 11th of August, 2015. Uh, we're kind of coming back up to that area. But, man, you had a lot of volume on the way down on these. It's coming back up. Energy a little bit off out here. Uh, I would be saying that adios to any of my uh, longs in the uh, rails out here. Uh, what else do we have? Try to get to as many of these people. Uh, What else? Uh, EBS, Emergent Biosolutions. Don't know about that. Frontier Communications. We talked about this one. They bought uh, the Fios, uh, Verizon Fios business down here in Florida. Um, this thing has been the highest shorted stock. Um, if we did get a move out of here, uh, this is one that I would be looking at. as a monster load of shorts on this every single day. Uh, to do what else do we have? Uh, to, 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 to. Uh, General Dynamics. Uh, oh, here, JP uh, Morgan Chase. Um, these broker dealers have been weak in the last leg up. Of course, if you were going up on light volume, as you did pretty much through uh, eh, June 27th all the way up to the recent highs. J.P. Morgan, a lot of dojis out here the last few days. Um, and, uh, you know, you're just a couple of bucks off the previous highs out here. Not too far. November 6th, uh, 69 bucks, And July 23rd, $70.61. Um, volume has not been great on these on the way back up. Energy from that last low on June 27th, also light. Uh, you've got three gaps and three decent gaps into this in just the last move. Uh, if anything decided to turn, uh, one looks probably the weakest in that sector to me. Uh, you've got a double gap at 61, which I think this has a very good chance of coming back and filling. Um, and if it gets there, probably a little bit more effort would get you into the 58 level, which is this gap back to the June 27th low. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have? Uh, da, 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 da. See anything else out here? Uh, soda, another one out here with some very interesting movements. Um, this one could have one more gap to the upside. Um, but uh, very interesting. Nice gap off the bottom when we talk about this on May 10th. Uh, 3.2 million shares gap in with 3.7 million shares. Uh, when we talk about three gap plays, this is what you like to see. Nice big gaps, increasing volume, and then the last time you get a gap up and there's not a lot of volume and the things just fall apart. Um, SodaStream, not exactly sure if anything's changed in that company. 
uh, may just be a huge short squeeze back up to the other side. Uh, Sox has been on a tear, although it's a little off today. Uh, staple, what is this? Uh, staples, yeah. I don't see a lot in that one. Uh, when we're talking beer, we got to talk about Molson's. Uh, looking at this one out here, a very light breakout today, so far anyway, of the June 10th high. 104.15, 2.2 million shares. What do we got today? 1.10, let's call it 1.2 million shares. We are going to be light as we break this previous high in Molson's Coors. Say it ain't so, Joe. Say it ain't so. Where's the bandit? He had to get those Coors down to Texarkana, didn't he? We'll be back. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back uh, to do, got a lot of email. I think we hit most of them. Um, of course, you can always email me at path at tfnn.com. And uh, what else does that? Uh, eh, got a few more here. Okay, uh, question on Apple. I thought we talked about it before. No big deal out here. It's not moving, uh, which is kind of interesting, uh, at least to me. Um, don't think you can say anything about it. Um, just a little lackadaisical move up here. I still suspect that uh, we've got a good chance of this coming back to 100. Um, we'll see the phone tomorrow at 1. I think uh, 
unless they have some a lot of interesting new appliances to plug into that USB C port, since just about nobody in the world has supported it yet, uh, is going to be interesting. Uh, to, to see if there's anything else. Um, wanted to look at a couple others. Got a question to look at Microsoft. I guess they just want me to look at the FANG stocks. Um, of course, Microsoft broke out very little volume. It's kind of back into the trading range. Now, uh, Amazon's at its all-time high. I don't know if that does us any good up here other than the fact uh, that it's up. Volume has picked up eh, rather lightly. But again, I think this is just the end of fund buying. And you're finding all the guys getting into the very few uh, stocks. Uh, Amazon is one, Facebook's the other. Uh, but uh, that money not finding a lot of other homes other than these uh, big uh, guys, uh, Amazon, Google. Take a quick look at Google out here. But uh, to me, this is just an artifact of the end of fund buying. Uh, and uh, any money that is out there is going into the big names. Uh, the old saying was you couldn't uh, get fired for uh, buying IBM, and I have a feeling the, that extends to the FANG stocks, uh, Google, Facebook, Amazon, and uh, Netflix. Oh, we didn't look at Netflix. Uh, do I got time? Yeah. Anyway, Google up today, uh, headed back for its resistance levels. I mean, this thing had a very, very uh, scary, would be the word, light volume test of the February 2nd high, 6.7 million shares with 1.6 million shares on August 11th. Uh, and you got 1.3 million shares today. So you're getting back up here with a very light volume. Um, but again, uh, just the markup phase of fund buying, as far as I'm concerned, uh, tomorrow, if this, uh, they could get this thing going and volume come in, I think that would be a lot more interesting to me as a signal uh, than just the traditional end of fund buying out here. Uh, anything else? Uh, yeah, somebody wanted me to look at Workday. If I can type it correct. I think we got enough time before the end of the show. Uh, da -da -da. You know, this is doing everything it could. I don't know if they're asking me if this is a short or a long, uh, but man, you got to think that if you bought this thing off the lows, uh, I would be vamoosing out here. This is, um, you know, you had three days of nice volume out here. It looked like you're probably at least going to get a little bit of pullback. Uh, what you have to dislike is it going against this gap. That gap down was on the 27th of May with uh, 9.3 million shares. Uh, we're up in these gaps last three days, 3.6 million shares, Friday 2.7 million shares. You would think we'd have more volume coming back today, 1.4 million shares so far in Workday. And that is, you know, you got a tremendous supply line on this. I love the company. I got to let this thing really pull back before I can buy it though. Long term, I mean. Anyway, welcome back to me. So when you can, not when you have to, we'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.